Good morning dolls and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So today is the final video for the original dollhouse tour and the last room of the original dollhouse is a room that took the most damage from the fire from the birthday candles which was the living room. It was a really long road having the courage to remove all the thick ugly plaster that I had built up on it over the years and even painted it red at one point but thankfully I had the courage to start over and now I show you what it looks like today in all its glory more beautiful than it had ever been and I just want uh, to allow you to just take it all in and look at everything as a whole and then I'll begin to take things out of the room individually so you'll really be able to see things up close. I really love this room. And if you notice, the wallpaper on the walls here are the same as the wallpaper inside the rooming house kitchen. I really love that wallpaper. So yeah, I've used it in more than one house. So now that I've allowed you to look at things from a distance, let's go ahead and do a deep dive and look at things up close. Now here, Dolls, is a lovely little low boy. This actually was a House of Miniatures kit, and it was originally brown, and I eventually painted it this taupe color because I wanted it to go more with the decor of the parlor. And it's got quite a bit of wax on top to hold all my treasures. This is a bowl of fruit that I made. I did not make the bowl. The bowl is a green glass. I ordered it probably from dollhouses and more. But this is a lovely little um, table or cabinet. It's really well made. I do believe my dad assembled it. And again, I repainted it at a later time. But I really love this. Again, it's a House of Miniatures kit. Now, dolls, this is a little trinket box that I made. I actually made it out of some scrap pieces of wood. Got a hinge on it that's way out of scale. But it actually works. It almost looks like a little cigar box. And then I added the little keyhole hardware on the front. I just remember being amused that the glue worked with the metal. I made this after I discovered Super Glue Gorilla Gel works on metal. <laughs> now this little red lamp is actually a replica of something I remember my great grandmother having at her house. When I saw it online, I just had to have it. Yeah, this item was definitely what you call a must-have. Mm -hmm. Now, dolls, this phone is just like the one in the parents' room. So the dolls in this house have a phone on each floor. Mm -hmm. Now, here's a lovely little end table. I have the blue gloves, the English coffee, some chocolate cake, and a beautiful teacup. I actually believe it's some mail under those gloves. But yeah, this was a little standard table, but I thought it worked perfect in that corner. Now, this is my beautiful tea set, and it's actually very similar to a set of china I have in real life. I have that lovely little jar of honey, and this little table is so lovely. I love it that it has two little pullouts on each side where you can sit your cup of tea. Mm -hmm. Now, dolls, here are a couple books I made, some little handmade books. I guess I definitely can do a tutorial on that. It looks like I use quite a bit of glaze on that. And I've got my newspaper and the gloves laying on the sofa. Now let me pull the camera back a little bit so you can see the sofa a little bit better. Now dolls, I'm really tickled looking at this sofa because I really love it quite a bit, but I really don't remember when or where I got it. I remember pulling the dollhouse out of storage and it was in the box. Absolutely beautiful. I love the color. I love the construction. It's just a beautiful piece. And it actually is a part of a set. But I do love those cream tones. And that's what motivated me to paint the low boy in that cream color. It coordinates really well with the overall look of the room. So there are two chairs that go with this sofa. And they're lovely. I do believe this is by Town Square Miniatures because I believe that's their branding at the bottom, the Town Square symbol. But I do actually really, really love these chairs. Now, there's two of them. So it just makes a lovely ensemble for the parlor. It has a really rich 
Victorian look, and I absolutely love it for that room. Now, here's a little LED candle that I have. You know, dolls, I don't use uh, electric lights. All of my lights are battery-powered lights, but this is really cute, and I love the glow of those little candles. And here's a clever little candlestick holder. I thought that was cute. It fits really nicely in the corner. Yeah, I definitely love that. Very well made, very finely crafted, very thin, very lightweight, very beautiful craftsmanship. Definitely a fine piece. Now, this is a funny little shopping bag that I made years ago. And I've never had the heart to let go of it. It's really cute. There's nothing in it. I made it with some leftover paper. Now, here is one of my tables that I consider one of my prized possessions. But let me show the accessories first. Now, this is a beautiful lamp that came from a minimum world. It was another one of those pieces that I just had to have. I'm just trying to allow you to see the beautiful glow. And again, it is a LED lamp, so it's battery powered, but I absolutely love it. I actually have two of these, but it's so pretty that even if the light didn't work, it's absolutely a beautiful decorative piece for the dollhouse. So let's put that back. Now, let's see here. Let me show you this little vase of flowers. So these are some just random dried flowers. I actually painted them to give them that color. But the actual vase is a toothpaste cap, the same type of cap that I use for shades for my trash to treasure lamps. And this is a lovely wine decanter set. Now I have it waxed to the platter, but I actually do believe I got this from Minimum World as well. And you see the decanter is removable, lots of wax on the bottom. And then the two wine glasses that are filled. I thought that was just lovely. But again, a lot of wax and dolls. That is absolutely removable and it does not harm the table. But I put it there to keep my items from falling over. But I want you to look at the fine detail work around this table. This is one of my favorite tables. It's actually a best pack. You see how thin and fine it is. Wow, that wax really looks terrible. But this is one of my favorites among all my collections. Now, dolls, here is a large version of that rug. Now, I do have a really small rug like this at the front door of the original dollhouse. But this is a large area room rug. And you see the pattern that's repeated that's in that same little rug that I showed you in one of the other videos. But I didn't have to use the burlap trim fringe on this one it was enough of the actual fabric to just fray to create the fringe and I did back it with the red felt like I did the other ones but I absolutely love this rug around the edges I actually just fray checked it to keep it from raveling and yeah a simple rug out of upholstery fabric so now let's get a glance of the room a little bit closer without the furniture I still have all the things on the walls, but let's get in here a little bit closer so you dolls can see. Now, I actually want you to see uh, these little um, fireplace tools. This is one of the few items that actually survived the fire. And it used to be really bright and shiny brass, but it is blackened and dirty from the fire, not from age. It actually got burned, but it actually added a nice patina to it. It makes it look really vintage, but that's from the actual damage from the fire. So grateful that this item actually survived. Now, dolls, I just want to turn your attention to my lovely chandelier. It's just like the chandelier in the rooming house, dollhouse dining room and in the dining room here in this house. So I actually bought three chandeliers, exactly the same ones, because I love them so much. Really, really cute. Now I do actually want to show you this fireplace. And you can see the way I fitted my molding was just to fit the fireplace. Now this is the original fireplace to this dollhouse. It actually survived the fire as well. Now, dolls, I did add that mantle, but if you look closely, you can see the cracks in it because the whole fireplace actually split 
and crack it actually cracked in three places but i was able to salvage it and glue it back together and added the mantle to give me a bigger surface for display now you can see here if you can look there you can see the crack if you can see that and you see around the back that i added actually some siding to help me seal it together and hold all the pieces together and then i added that brick part on the inside and if you can see here, I added the bottom actually to stabilize it as well and put that little brickwork in the back of it. Again, just to give it a little bit more realism. And these are three pieces of branches I found outside. I glued them together. So yeah, I did quite a few things to modify this fireplace so that I could salvage it and make it sturdy so I could continue to use it. But I think uh, I did a great job. And this little owl and my little candlesticks were all gifts from my childhood. So all these items are very precious to me. Now that little blue face, I think I got that from doll houses and more. Now here is an image of the room with everything removed. And I want you to pay close attention to that door because that's a false door like the false door in the parents' room. It doesn't lead to anywhere. It doesn't open up or anything. Now this floor is the original floor that I put in in 1978. It's made with popsicle sticks and I stained it with some of my dad's brown shoe polish. So yes, this is the original floor. Now dolls, I was trying to pull this picture off the wall, but it's a little bit difficult and I really don't want to disrupt the wax. So maybe I'll just take the camera in a little further. Now, going back to the conversation about the false door, now it's actually an outside door that I framed in and put here on the inside. And I actually put a curtain behind the glass to just to make it look as though that was just a decorative thing and made it an inside door. But I really, really like it. And I tried to paint it to make it look like it was partially open. So that's where that little light part is. But yeah, that was my answer to not having a staircase that goes up to the third floor. So I pretend that there's a staircase behind that doorway. Now you do see I have quite a few things on the walls. I have pictures that I've framed. And these are pictures of people I actually don't know. But I thought they were really nice pictures. So I thought they would look like family members. And these as well. This is a beautiful picture of a family so I created a frame and put it in there. Now here are some lovely plates that I got out of one of my special bundles and this is the picture of the continent of Africa that I actually found in a magazine and I mod podged it. Now that's a picture of Bishop Samuel Hancock which was our church bishop many years ago and he later married my great-grandmother. And there's a close-up picture of our family church many, many years ago, 2238 Clinton Street. I felt really fortunate to be able to find a small picture like that and be able to frame it and put it in the dollhouse. So much history, so much family memories. Although some of the other pictures are people I don't know, they remind me of people I know and family members, and they fit inside the frames. <laughs> Now this is a little clock that I made out of some scrap pieces of wood many years ago. And this is what I mean, dolls. I was making miniatures out of scraps and trash, literally. These were two sticks that I found, glued them together, found a clock face, a piece of jewelry, a broken piece of crown molding, put it all together and painted it and called it a clock. Those little things along the side are some pieces of some spindles that I cut off and added to the side for decoration. So, yeah, when you want to create miniatures, you'll do it by any means necessary, dolls. You really will. Now, at this point, I have the skill set and the materials to upgrade this clock to make it look a lot better but I don't want to change it. I want to leave it just the way it is. So I'll always remember my growth, how far I've come. It's a reminder that the passion to create miniatures was always there. Now dolls, this is just a view through the spindles down the stairwell. I just thought that view looked really realistic. 
Now I just wanted to give you a quick glance at my window dressing here in the parlor or living room of the original dollhouse. I have shutters up in the bay window. I finished it out with that same brickwork that I have inside the fireplace. So yes, dolls, I've got shutters instead of curtains. And that's just a large piece of lace, more or less acting as a big valance. But yeah, that was my solution for my curtains because that was before I really knew how to make curtains. And this is a view of the parlor with all the furniture removed. So I guess it's about time for me to start putting things away. I remember wondering how I would put furniture in this room because I didn't think that there was enough floor space to really arrange the amount of furniture that I wanted in the room. And then I learned about decorating. <laughs> everything doesn't have to sit against the wall. Now let me get everything arranged properly because the residents are home and they're waiting for me to get done with my tour before they come in. But they have agreed to allow me to photograph them before we end this tour. So you will get a quick glance at them before the party. These dolls are the residents of this house and some of their extended family that is in town for the big party at the roaming house. So this is a very exciting time for them because they're actually the owners of the roaming house doll house. So this is a really big deal for them and a very special time. So they've been very gracious in allowing us to tour their home during this celebration. And I just want to be respectful of their time and to make sure I put their home back together the way I found it. So dolls, I just want to step back from this room and kind of do a grand finale of the view of the whole house so you can just see everything in its entirety, each room. So you see where the parlor is in relationship to the bathroom. It's just above the dining room and that's next to the kitchen. And you see the curtains and the window dressings and everything. And I just kind of want to step back so you can just get a full view of the house overall. Now you see why I had to break it down into individual rooms because it would have been a super crazy long video to go through each of those rooms all on one video. So dolls, let's just do a quick glance of all the rooms all together. And here is the dining room. And here is the lovely kitchen. And then a couple weeks ago, I showed you the bathroom. And then the little girl's room. And then we have the parents' room. And last but not least, we have daddy's room in the original dollhouse attic where he can live with me forever, regardless to what happens. Now, if you dolls have enjoyed this video today, definitely let me know in the comments, like, share, and subscribe, and always look for me on Mondays and Wednesdays after 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I want to thank everyone for being on this tour with me of the original Doll House, which was my start to 12 scale miniatures. And I want to say a special thank you to all my subscribers, because without you, there would be no celebration. And I also want to say thank you to those of you who haven't subscribed, but you're watching. I appreciate you as well. So as a bonus, here is video of the residents of the original Doll House in all of their beauty. Now, dolls, you know the big party is this Wednesday with all the dolls in the dining room of the Roaming House Doll House. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing you all there on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.